Hey guys, today we are going to look at applying quadratic equations. We're going to answer the question, how do I solve real world problems involving quadratic equations? So to solve real world problems involving quadratic equations, you want to read the question and then you will either need to write or identify the quadratic equation. If you're having to write the equation, defining the variables can help. So write down what X and Y equal. And then we're going to solve the quadratic equation using the best method. And then we will decide if one or both of the solutions work in the context of the original problem. And we may need to substitute the solution back into that original equation. And then we will check our answer for reasonableness. So let's start with this first one. It says, find the dimensions of the rectangle below if the area is 65 feet squared. So they gave us the length and width of this rectangle, and then they told us that the area is 65. So I'm going to assume I need to set up an equation with the area formula. So area is length times width, and they told us the area was 65, and it equals the length times the width. So x times x minus 8. Okay, so now I need to solve this equation. Usually, whenever I have something like this, I set each factor equal to zero, but this equation's not set equal to zero yet, so I cannot do that. So I think I need to go ahead and distribute, and I get 65 equals x squared minus 8x. Okay, we could do completing the square if we wanted, but I'm gonna try factoring. So I want to finish setting this equal to zero, so I'm going to subtract 65. And I get zero equals x squared minus 8x minus 65. So I'm going to see if I can figure out the numbers that multiply to negative 65 and add to negative 8. I believe that would be negative 13 and 5. Let me double check that negative 13 times 5. Yes, that's negative 65. Okay, so this will break down into x minus 13 and x plus 5. And now I'm going to set each of these factors equal to 0. x minus 13, I'll set that equal to 0. And when I add 13, I get x equals positive 13. And then x plus 5 equals 0 will be the other equation. So I subtract 5 and get x equals negative 5. Okay, let's think about what x represented here. It was the width of the rectangle, which is not going to be a negative number. So we're going to throw out the negative solution. So x was 13, so this side was 13 feet. And then this side is x minus 8, so it would be 13 minus 8 feet, which would be 5 feet. So... The dimensions here, it said find the dimensions. The dimensions are 5 feet by 13 feet. All right, let's look at the second one. It says the length of a rectangle is x plus 7 inches and the width is x minus 1 inches. Find the measure of the length and the width if the area is 128 square inches. So I'm pretty sure you can use the same formula. Area equals length times width. So they told me the area was 128. So I'm going to do 128 equals the length, which was x plus 7 times the width, which was x minus 1. Okay, so I cannot solve this by factoring yet because it's not set equal to 0. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply these, and then I will subtract that to set it equal to 0, and then we'll talk about the best method to use. So I'm going to use the box to multiply this binomial times a binomial. So I'm going to do x plus 7 times x minus 1. x times x is x squared. x times negative 1 is negative 1x. x times 7 is 7x. And 7 times negative 1 is negative 7. So then when I combine the like terms, I'll get 128 equals x squared. And then 7x minus 1x is 6x. 
and then minus seven. And now to finish setting this equal to zero, I'm going to subtract 128. And I get zero equals x squared plus six x, and then negative seven minus 128. is negative 135. Okay, so now I need to figure out what multiplies to negative 135 and adds to positive six. So I'm just gonna try dividing negative 135 by numbers until I get two that work. Five and 27 are not gonna work. Um, let's try, maybe it's divisible by 15. Okay, 15 and negative nine. So 15 times negative nine is 135, and that adds to positive six. So this simplifies to x plus 15 times x minus nine. And now I'm going to set each factor equal to zero, x plus 15 equals zero. So subtract 15 and we get x equals negative 15. And then x minus nine, we'll set that equal to zero. And then add nine, and we get x equals positive nine. So it's probably gonna be the positive solution that works here, but let's double check. We need the dimensions to be positive, like the length and the width of a rectangle cannot be negative. So if I do negative 15 plus seven, that's gonna be a negative number. So that's not gonna work. So x equals nine is gonna be the solution that we go with. And now I can find the length by doing x plus seven or nine plus seven, which would be 16. And then I can find the width by doing x minus one or nine minus one, which would be eight. So the dimensions would be eight inches by 16 inches. All right, let's look at number three. It says the length of a rectangular rug is six yards less than its width. Find the dimensions of the rug if the area is 27 square yards. So I'm gonna draw a picture this time feel like that might help me since they're not just straight up telling me the dimensions. It tells me the area is 27 and then it says the length of the rectangular yards is six less than the width. So if I let the width be x then the length would be six less than that so x minus six. Okay now I have my length and my width defined so I can plug into my area formula length times width so it'll be 27 equals x times x minus six. So I'm going to distribute here since it's not set equal to zero and I get 27 equals x squared minus six x and then I'm going to subtract 27 and I get zero equals x squared minus six x minus 27. So now I can solve this by factoring. I need to figure out what multiplies to negative 27 and adds to negative six, which would be negative nine and three. So this will be zero equals x minus nine times x plus three. So now I set each factor equal to zero. X minus nine equals zero would mean that X is nine. And then X plus three equals zero. I would subtract three and get x equals negative three. So one of my dimensions was x and the length of the rectangle cannot be negative. So we're gonna throw out the negative solution and we're gonna use x equals nine. So this length is nine and then nine minus six is three. That width is three. So it would be three yards by nine yards. Okay, number four, the height of a triangle is three less than its base. If the area of the triangle is 14 centimeters squared, 
find the length of the height. So I'm going to start by drawing a picture of a rectangle to try and help figure this out. So they tell me that the area of the triangle is 14. And then it says that the height is three less than its base. So if the base is X, then the height would be X minus three. Okay, now let's see if I can remember the triangle formula. One half base times the height is the area. So it'll be one half times the base was X times the height is X minus three and it's gonna equal 14. Okay, so let's talk about the best way to solve this. This one half, I feel like it's gonna throw me off, so I'm gonna try to get rid of that first. So this is being multiplied by one half, so I'm gonna do the opposite of that, which is multiplying by the reciprocal of two over one or just two. And whatever you do to one side, you do to the other. So now that one half goes away and I'm left with x times x minus three equals 14 times two is 28. Okay, now I'm going to distribute and I get x squared minus three x equals 28. And these are relatively small numbers, so I'm gonna see if I can solve by factoring, so I'm gonna set it equal to zero. And I get x squared minus three x minus 28 equals zero. And now I need to find the numbers that multiply to negative 28 and add to negative three, which would be negative seven and four. So that factors into X minus seven times X plus four equals zero. Okay, now let's set each factor equal to zero. X minus seven equals zero. I would add seven and get X equals seven and then X plus four equals zero. Means I would subtract four and get that X is negative four. Okay, the base was X. The base cannot be negative, so I'm gonna throw out my negative solution and I'm gonna use X equals seven. So that means that the base is seven and then the height is X minus three, so seven minus three, which is four. So the problem had told us to find the length of the height. We found the height, it is four centimeters. Okay, let's look at number five. It says the product of two consecutive integers is 72, find the integers. So remember consecutive integers are numbers that are in a row, like one, two, three, four, and five. They are one apart. That's how you keep getting to the next number, just keep adding one. So if I have two consecutive integers, I'm going to let the first one just be X, and then I'll let the second one, it's one after that, so it'll be X plus one. And the product means I'm gonna multiply them together, and then it says it is, so I'll set it equal to 72. So my equation will look like this, x times x plus one equals 72. Okay, so now I need to solve this, so I'm gonna distribute and I get x squared plus x equals 72. And then I'm gonna set this equal to zero and I'm gonna try to solve it by factoring. So I get x squared plus x minus 72 equals zero and I wanna figure out what multiplies to negative 72 and adds to one, which I believe would be nine and negative eight. So this is going to factor into X plus nine and X minus eight equals zero. And now I'm gonna solve for each solution. I'm gonna set X plus nine equal to zero and I get negative nine and then I'm going to set X minus eight equal to zero and add eight and I get X equals positive eight. Let's go back to the question. Remember it said the product of two positive consecutive integers and one of the integers was X. So I'm gonna throw out the negative solution cause that's not gonna work here. It would be eight 
And then the consecutive integer after that is nine, and that makes sense because eight times nine is 72. Okay, let's look at number six. It says find two positive consecutive odd integers such that the square of the first added to three times the second is 24. So odd integers would be like one, three, five, seven. Those are two apart. So I'm still going to let the first integer be x. But the second one has to be 2 behind it to stay odd. So it'd be x plus 2. OK, let's see if we can write an equation with this information that they gave us now. The square of the first means x squared added to, so plus, 3 times the second, the second is x plus 2, is 24. Okay, that looks like a crazy equation, so let me try to simplify it some. So I'm going to distribute the 3, and I get x squared plus 3x plus 6 equals 24. And now I'm going to set it equal to 0. And I get x squared plus 3x minus 18 equals 0. And now I want to figure out what multiplies to negative 18 and adds to 3, which would be 6 and negative 3. So that will factor into x plus 6 times x minus 3 equals 0. And now I'm going to set each factor equal to 0, x plus 6. I would subtract 6 and get x equals negative 6. And then x minus 3. I would add 3 and get x equals 3. And then this question was asking for positive integers again, and one of the integers was x, so that means that I can throw out the negative solution. So the first integer is 3, and then the next odd integer after that would be 5.